All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It's already been a wild start to November, and now as we enter into the second week, we have the main event with the CPI and a lot of crazy market moves ahead. So I got three things we need to go over. We're going to talk about what happened last week, how it relates into next week. Then number two, we're going to discuss what we have on the calendar, the CPI, and it's not only just inflation that's what's going to make this week kind of a little more interesting but then finally we have to talk about what people are saying for the rest of the month and the rest of the year moving forward so chad what i need from you a thumbs up on the video make sure you're subscribed and if you don't know we are live monday through friday 30 minutes before open youtube.com slash the stock market we will see you there in the morning it's free 99 and and wait no i almost forgot forgot. I almost forgot. Today is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. I don't even have a visual because they messed it up. We got the random account generator. But what I need from you is a random option trade. Keep it below $100 and post it in the comments below. And we are going to pick it randomly before we go live tomorrow. So, or while we go live at the beginning. But run it, baby. Yeah. Welcome to the couch. It's the joint on the left. Live in the hair. But it's still going to spread. Started with a live, but it's still reinvested. Fear how I fear. Do you feel less and bless it? I just want the lesson. I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it to the down. Hold it down. All right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Everybody wants to talk about the CPI, and that is going to be Tuesday, one hour before the bell. I will give you a nice preview tomorrow, and we will be live for it, but let's talk about what happened last week, man. Nine out of ten trading days were green. You remember the bear market rally? There was a little bit of an overshoot to the downside on Thursday. Well, at the end of Friday, you gapped up, gave back a little bit, but by like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern, the market was already squeezing. There was no updates, no crazy events. The bad bond auction and the negative Powell or hawkish Powell, it wasn't enough to stop things. Bonds even got a little bit of a rebound but remember they were holding up prior everything held in the range and the market was able to shrug off any bit of downside leaving you with one of the most bullish stretches that the market has seen in 2023 a year filled with starting at the lows svb all the all sorts of crises in between a downgrade and remember that happened on the credit on august and even coming into it even on friday and the market's closed green we'll still see where it is on monday there was news that uh, Moody's changed the outlook on the United States rating to negative from stable. It wasn't a full-on downgrade, and to give you some context too, Moody's is the only one out of the S&P and Fitch who has yet to downgrade United States credit. It was back in August. That was Fitch who decided to lower the rating. Yes, that was recent. So that's what happened on Friday. We had a lot of movements. Again, everybody was worried about the bear market rally or not and now what do I think about it I still think everything is in play how we closed on Friday though it does give us a very bullish bias leading into it we'll talk about that on the end but now what you have to deal with this week that's what's going to make everything all the more interesting the way I'm looking at it you have the CPI to confirm whether or not you are going to get your end of the year rally or not or if it's going to delay it by two weeks or not so pretty much good CPI I think we're going to rock it through for the rest of the month and year and a lot of people are talking about that bad CPI it comes in hotter we may get a little bit more of a pullback and then start punting to the next jobs data and CPI before saying yeah we should really go lower or market tries to get back up here so that's how I'm thinking and a lot of other people are right now in the market but maybe we don't get ahead of ourselves because even after we get the CPI this week there is still going to be another one and then you still have two non-farm payrolls before you hear from Powell and he is probably going to be the ultimate decider but as far as this week now in the calendar like I'm telling you it's all going to boil down to the CPI on Tuesday to start the week off on Monday you're not going to get much I believe there is Japan uh, data coming out like Japan factory numbers you will get more data from China throughout the week ZEW confidence out of Germany on Tuesday and you're going to hear from the EC 
CB. I think even the next day we're going to get United Kingdom CPI, but it's all going to boil down to Tuesday. But I don't know if it's on the schedule here on Wednesday. The only other big event that you have here, there is data and we'll get into that, but Xi Jinping, he is visiting San Francisco. There's an economic conference. Biden and Xi Jinping are going to be meeting. A lot of people have been hyping it up. You're also going to be getting earnings this week from companies like JD and Baba. Those are Chinese. That's important. But then, like we said last week, you will be hearing from the retail companies. So that's where we could go into the data now because after the CPI on Tuesday, Wednesday, you get the PPI. That will also be important. And depending on what type of number we get from that, maybe we'll see how important the PPI will be. It has been affecting the bonds as of late, but then you're going to be getting retail sales as well. And this is going to be an important theme of this week because a lot of people are going to be focusing on the consumer. Not only are you going to get this data, but then you have companies like Walmart, Target, Home Depot. They are reporting and they are going to say something about the consumer guidance into the holidays and all of that good stuff. So keep that in mind, but I think that's going to be your most important things. I think there's one more thing. Thursday, again, uh, that is the Xi Jinping meeting. Friday shouldn't be getting much. And then uh, again, next week, I do believe you get the jobs data. It's a week after that, but even more important, you do resume those bond auctions once again. So this week, remember last week you had Powell, bond auction, all that good stuff. You don't have any of that this week. You have like four week, eight week auctions. It's not going to upset anything. But then next week we get back into that whole, oh wait, what's the results of the bond auction and all of that. On top of that, you will get other Fed speakers this week too, but I do think it's going to boil down to that Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday data punch, and then we'll see if there's any good catalysts which will come out of talking between Biden and Xi Jinping. So that's all I have for you. It should be very simple. I'll give you a CPI update tomorrow, but now... Let us get into the plays. So uh, right off the bat, I got a couple of different plays that I'm going to be looking at. They are very simple, but I'm going to start with one because it had a lot of action on Friday, and it is Boeing. So the first thing we saw on Friday, it had a little drop in pop. There was reports of them getting hacked. I think it was the same group that hacked the ICBC, that China bank. Well, they had Boeing, and this was announced by Boeing like a week ago, but then on Friday, they announced Boeing and announced that the company or the hackers got the company files and did indeed release them. So they said they contacted the people who were responsible, but they said it does not affect their planes or safety. Nothing monetarily yet, but I don't think there is a problem, but watch out for that. But now why I'm really bringing this up is because watch Boeing and a lot of other airline producers. There's a couple out there, but you will get a lot of news this week. There's already a rumor on Friday. People are saying, oh, a big order of Boeing. 777 from Emirates. It's that's what sources say. Why do sources say that? Because there is the Dubai Air Show. It starts on Monday, leading into the 17th or the 19th. But this is where you will hear a lot of airline orders. And you're already starting to hear some of those grumblings right now leading into it. So watch out for Boeing. I'm sure at one point, either people are going to front run this or you're going to see this throughout the week. You're going to get a headline out of that conference. And then it should get a big move. So watch out for that. That is play number one. Then play number two. I'm giving you a three for one. I already told you, HD. Walmart and Target. These are retail and like I'm saying, the whole consumer narrative, some names like Target, they're pretty clapped. Walmart is doing amazing coming into it. I don't think uh, HD's earnings were good last time. They're kind of in the gulag for the year, but still kind of elevated. I guess not. Did they really come? No, they're, they're still up there. They're not like 2020 lows, but you know what I'm saying. But these are going to be important for the whole economy and just some of this sentiment leading into the end of the year. And oh, I forgot to tell you there. I, I got into the plays actually without even even saying, I forgot to give you the phrase. So what I was talking about, again, related to end of the year, people are going to use the consumer thing, but the final thing with the market that people are really looking at, and if again, if CPI ends up being good, I hate to tell you this phrase. This was from the Flow Show. This was Michael Hartnett of Bank of America, and it says here, no recession in 23 equals no recession in 24 gaining popularity. He said a lot of other things. He was even talking about if bond yields stay 
stay below 4.4 on the 10 year, then the S&P should be greater than 444 and a lot of other things. But in general, go back to this other one. There's just a lot of different things. Soft landing camp, end of the year. If you go from this gigantic green stretch after thinking everything was going to end and rates are higher and tighter and everything's being good, a lot of people are feeling very confident, not only into the end of the year, but people are setting up and getting ready now for even trades into next year even some of the 2024 election trade themes again think about it you have an election coming up certain things will get supported and promoted and wall street is already talking about that now so that was the final thing but i think it flows in very very nicely with the consumer earnings so watch out for that that is play number two or one you know three for one on play number two but then finally play number three Alibaba got a play on Baidu and JD. JD reports first, but depending on how this conference goes, again, China's stocks in China have been doing a little bit better after getting totally clobbered after thinking they were going to rally at the beginning of the year. But I think you it's not too long, either end of the year or beginning of next year. You may start hearing that rumor again of, oh, China is going to be coming back because... We're getting our relationships there, but also if we're ready to be done tightening, maybe China's ready to start growing. I don't know. That's a, it's a different it's a different theory. You should know. You should know if anything, but going to be watching those plays. Keep an eye out on the China ones in the earnings. I do think Baba, you just had singles day even on Sunday or Saturday over the weekend, so watch out for that, but that is everything else. I made a play on ZB. I'm holding a long bond from Friday. That was the only other play that I made. There was news again about the settlements from that China thing, so I think their money still hasn't hit to a degree taking more of a speculative play I'm going to try to flip out of that one before the CPI but really just like last week you saw those MESs and you saw a couple of data plays and just outsized moves I think we will be getting that with the data this week so that'll be the only other thing I'm watching but Chad I hope you're ready for all of it it is very very simple we watch the data it's either going to be action or we punt the ball so I hope you're ready but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And I need you to remember, if a train goes through a tunnel, you don't throw out the ticket and jump off the train because you can't see where it's going. You go through the tunnel. It's like the market. And they conduct. Who's like conduct? Oh, my so, Chad, I hope you're ready for this week. You got daylight savings on your time. Get some rest, drink some water, stay hydrated, healthy, all the good stuff. I'll see you this week. We'll have the data. We'll be early in all of it. But I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you in the morning. Or not. <laughs>